Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Unemployed to Unstoppable as we take charge in the further games for Budafok in the Hungarian 2nd Division. After a promising start, things have taken a bit of a turn for the worse. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it. First thing really to talk about is the results since you were last here. So obviously in the last episode we came away with a 1-0 win against Pex, courtesy of a Kovacs goal. We followed that up with a victory over Kozim Arslany with Ben Zelek. He's standing in up front uh, due to injuries. He actually got two goals straight away. But kind of a bit of a redemption arc for him really. The player I was looking to get rid of. He's actually scored five goals since you were last with us. So he might actually be staying. Uh, we then had Kizvada in the cup. We went 2-0 up in that to a team in the division above us. But unfortunately they equalised in the last minute. And then went on to beat us on penalties. Which was a bit hard to take. But... Um, the league is more important. We did get another victory in the league against Tizaxi, 3-2 uh, again. Coxis, Nandori and Lorenz with the goals um, to push us up the table, got us out of the relegation zone. But following that result, we went on a bit of a, a, a disaster run. We had a couple of injuries. Kovacs was one of them and uh, our right winger both dropped out. So we were quite short on players. Had a loss to Masson Magyarava and Honved. Uh, we were going to come back for the Nirang Haza game, but um, I thought I'd play that because I was getting a little bit eager and we were coming up to a transfer window, which we'll talk about in a minute. And again, Ben Selleck got two goals late in the game to get us a 2-2 draw. And then the last game we played was against Guillemot. Again, a 1-1 draw, a late equaliser. So not the best, uh, but what that does mean in terms of the league position is we are just outside the relegation zone. So not too bad. Form's not the greatest, but I think as we get more and more players back into the squad, which you can see here, we've got a couple on their way back. Um, Kalmar's dropped out as a reserve less back, but some of the bigger players, Nemeth's now back, Kovacs is back, so we should be able to field a much stronger team as we move forward. Staff-wise, we've managed to fill out um, and flesh out the coaching staff, so we're up to a full complement across the board now. That makes our um, competitiveness and comparison within the league look a lot healthier now, actually being top in uh, analysing data. So hopefully that from a recruitment side, as we approach the transfer window coming up in January, that's going to help us just bring in a couple more players, bolster up the squad, prepare ourselves more for next season than, than for this season. But we're still evaluating the players we want to keep. Like Ben Zelek, he might stay, depending if he carries on scoring goals, and we might concentrate on other areas. But... In terms of staff, it's looking pretty good. Coming up to the transfer window, which I mentioned in January, fortunately we've able, managed to get an offer for Andras Horvath, the goalkeeper. So for £1,200, he's going to go away the 15th of January, so that's when the transfer window opens. He'll be gone. We've still got our first choice goalkeeper and a reserve goalkeeper. What we might actually do is bring in a youth prospect on to pull up. What I have noticed in the last few games, and it's become more and more of a problem as the injuries have packed up, is the requirement to have an under-20 player in the starting lineup every time is more and more difficult to manage. Faz Vari is a really good player to have up front, but again, he's not always fit and he's not always available for the game. The other one we've been relying on is Adam Naremnyi. He Again, he's had a couple of good games. He plays on the wing, he's played in at left-back. But having that filler position when one of them's injured or unfit, it makes it really difficult to field a full strong 11. So what we've done is brought in a number of players on trial. So these ones in green. So we've got Florin Lacco, Balaz Smead, Patrick Illies, Balaz Orzag, Daniel Vegetali. Again, he's, he's not looking too bad a player. Sacco, Kiss and Medio round them up. What we've got, we've got them on, leave, on trial for two weeks. We'll try and figure out what they are stats-wise, what they are in terms of ability and potential. And what we look to do is all of them are under 19 or under 20. We'll just look to bring one or two of them into the squad if they're in and around the first team just to make it a bit more manageable in terms of picking that first team choice. Um, so I'll let you know how they get on, hopefully uh, before the end of the episode. And finally, before we get into the games, we have had a bit of a tweak to some of the tactic, tactical side of things. So we've moved the deep line playmaker over to the right hand side of the central midfielder and turned it into a ball winning midfielder position on the other side. Soretto on the right hand wing, we're going to toy with making him a bit more attacking, having a support on the left, attack on the right. 
and our fullbacks have moved to automatic rather than support just to try and give us a bit more defensive stability. Um, that being said, reasonably happy with how the chances created per game. We have been below par on a, on a couple of occasions, but I put some of that down to the fact that we've been managing the under-19 commitment um, and having the injuries to Nemeth, Kovac, Soreto. It's all piled up a bit. But we, we seem to be beyond that now, and we should be able to field a good team for this uh, match coming up. So that match coming up is Ajka. So if you bear with me, I'll get the team ready, and we'll see if we can um, get another green circle on the board. Uh, welcome to the away game against Ajka. Hoping to get a good result today. So starting lineups been picked. We've got Gundal Takax in goal. Back four of Falchi, Kogosi, Lorenz, and Baranyi. Midfield of Ola and Kasonka. And then a front four of Pinta, Nemeth, Zaretto, with Fazvari being the under 20 player up front. Some of them still lacking a little bit of fitness. But that's the best team I think we can pick for this until we get reinforcements to rotate that under 21 player around and gives a bit more flexibility in what we can what we can do. So we'll get the team out there. What I'm gonna do is take it off extended and stick it on key. And we'll see if we can uh, make any kind of a fight to this game. So fairly easy. Hopefully we can limit them to the number of chances they get. I know it's their home game. But it would be nice if we, if we could get some of the chances here. As the first chance pans out to Pinter down the left-hand side. He breaks towards the edge of the box. Puts it through into the middle. And Vasvari makes his selection up front. Um, well worthy. The under-20 getting a goal. Early in the game, Pinter strong run down the left hand side. Not doing too bad, just cuts it across. Fazvari just waiting in there, a little tap in from inside the six yard box. And that is just the start we wanted. Again, hopefully, we can keep it tight at the back as we punt the ball long. See if they're going to build up from the back or whether we can win it again. We've been reasonably solid from the back. That says that is. Salah gets a goal, but it looks like it's been offside, so that's kind of saved us a little bit there. Keeps us 1 0 up. In terms of XG, we're doing all right. Good shots, getting them on target. Let's move this up to 10th as it currently stands as Fotyuk breaks down the left hand side. Plays it back to Hergozi. He just plays around Lorenz back out to this left hand side, which were quite strong on the left. Into Fotyuk, Pinter gets through, but unfortunately, he's unable to finish. Not seen many of our set pieces work out yet. Still have to play about with the set pieces in the training. I've not really found anything that, that works. We've gone near post in swingers, but as of yet, we've not been successful. And that chance fades out to nothing. Pint having a good game, so Vasvari having a good game. As we just approach the half hour mark, 1 0 up, looking fairly solid, limiting the number of chances that Ajka have. And this would be a much welcome boost to us in the table because in recent games with two losses and two draws, we have stemmed the, the loss rate, but two points out of 12 is not ideal, especially when you're looking to pull away from that relegation zone. As Ajka just played the ball around the back, just casual all the way back to the goalkeeper, in fact. So this is a bit of a slow build up. One cut through ball to Saka, and he's put it wide again. It's not good that, that that one little through ball is managing to take out our midfield and back four. That's something we may have to address. As a little set piece play gets them back in the game. One two touch football, straight ball into Farkas. He touches it into Volskia and finishes it. So, unfortunately, they've got back in the game. One one, not too bad a result. Away game at half time. A bit disappointed where we had such a good start. We'll just get into the second half. Make some changes. We've got Kovacs on the bench. We can bring on for Vasvari. But obviously we then have to bring on uh, Mareni, either a left back or left or right wing. So that's dropped us down to 14th in the league. Again, we'll give it a little bit of time. And then we'll make some changes. So what we'll probably look to do is get Vasvari off for... Mareni, put Mareni into where Soretto is and then get Soretto off for Kovacs and see if our right and out striker 
probably our best player can get us back into the game. I'll say get back, get us back ahead in the game. So far, five shots, four on target, which isn't a bad um, success rate in terms of shots. Ola comes off for Nandori. Nemeth with the corner. Again, still no success on it. Second ball cycled in. But unfortunately, we weren't able to hit the target. Back four not setting themselves alight in terms of player ratings. As in the 87th minute, Aj could get a chance from a corner. Looks like going to outswing it. Barani heads it clear initially. They've got a chance to fire it back in. And unfortunately, from the edge of the box, Tars put it in the bottom corner. And from being 1-0 up and looking all right in the first half, we've capitulated a little bit and fallen behind right at the death. And this is like the cup game all over. <laughs> Doing well, looking like we might pick up some sort of result. And then just that that killer punch right at the end of the game has put us 2-1 down. It's a bit of a hard one to take. Good effort from the team, but... We're just going to have to find a way to keep ourselves a little bit tighter at the back. We're still outside the relegation zone. And we need to start hitting more of our chances or becoming a bit more creative. So bear with me. I'm going to get through. It's transfer window time. I'll come back and let you know how we get on with trial lists and if we bring in any new faces and if we've got the outgoings to bring the wage budget down. Um, and then we'll review that team before we end the episode. So stay tuned. Uh, welcome back for the final time this episode. Um, transfer window is closed. There's, there's a lot to talk about, really. Um, lots of funny little things happened. Um, but let's just get straight into it. So in terms of ingoings, out of all the trialists, the only one we opted to sign was Daniel Vegetale. He comes in as like a, a midfield option. Uh, he's got a little bit of potential. His stats don't look too bad for, for um, the rest of the squad. It keeps our numbers quite high and gives an extra under 20 to rotate through the squad to maintain that um, that requirement. So useful, not the best signing in the world. He's not going to uh, kind of fit into the first team, but he, he gives us options and a bit of flexibility. In terms of outgoing then, Andras Horvath, the goalkeeper, was from quite a bit of wages. We've let him go. We got £1,200 for him. Um, so that was good. Mate Fiquete as well. Again, we were able to let him go. Um, he wasn't going to get in our first team. He was taking up wages, so we went. And then... Christian Giore, he was he was actually not too bad of a midfielder to have around, but again, we had better options available, so it was, it was best to just let him go. Uh, the other things that kind of happened along the way is um, we hit a bad patch of form. On two occasions, the squad came to me saying they'd lost faith in me as a manager. Uh, we had multiple club meetings in terms of boosting morale. We've made a number of promises. Um, that led to a tactical change. So what we've done is instead of playing two deep midfielders, we've brought two forward. So we've got a centre midfielder on attack now, a ball winning midfielder, and then a deep line playmaker sat just in front of the back four. Um, with the changes we previously made to have an attacking winger on one side and a support winger on the other, what actually happened is we had a, a bit of a change in fortunes in terms of, of the results. So as you can see here, following that 2-1 defeat you saw earlier on in the video, um, we had a win against Halidas. 3-1 and again you can see from the stats in that game that quite a significant upturn in performance certainly in the, the front half of the field so the changes obviously paid dividends in the second game against Pex who we played on the opening episode again much of an uptake in terms of player performance only, only Oliver Horvath's under a seven two goals from Kovacs so I think we may have turned the corner um, I think we're doing all right the squad's not looking too bad. The squad planner isn't looking as healthy as it maybe was. We've got a number of players still coming up to the end of their contract. We've got to make decisions on whether we're going to let them go or keep them. What we have done, though, is we've extended the contracts of a number of our better players. So whereas a lot of players are going to extend in 2024, we've kind of taken all the best ones from that. So your Lorenz, your Horvaths, your Nemeths, your Kovacs, the goalkeeper Takax and Soretto, all the kind of players that I would like to keep for next season. We've managed to secure them on a longer contract, um, which gives us a stable foot and ready for next season. The rest of the players are kind of playing for their places. I mean, the lone players will disappear. Um, I don't think there's really much way we can hang on to them. We'll let them go, we'll let the squad thin out naturally. The rest of the players who don't really fit in in terms of 
their position in the squad, their age, their wages. If they can't justify their position or they're just poor overall, we'll let them contracts expire to free up wage budget so we can get a few free transfers in for the next season. So all being told, it's not been a bad transfer window. Uh, it was unfortunate in terms of club morale, although I think we've turned the corner and hopefully uh, we'll make it to the next episode. That being said, we'll probably come back as it's just a visit in the middle so we'll come back for the Kazim Barkala, Barkaka game and Soroksa which is televised we'll come back for them two games as a bit of a progress update on how we're getting on hopefully by then the formation changes and the squad settlements would have kind of taken effect we won't be in as much of a precarious um, position if I can find it so at a minute we're at a B minus at one point we were at a D um, they're obviously a bit more pleased in terms of the results. I don't know if I can just show you that quickly before it goes. Normally you can get a better kind of snapshot of of what your results were, but I can't seem to find it this time. I'll try and get it for next time anyway. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the episode. Hopefully you can see the progress we're making or at least see the vision we've got in our head. Um, if you think I'm doing anything daft or you've been playing the game yourself, especially in one of the more obscure leagues, um, outside of the traditional English leagues that we often see. Let us know how you're getting on, let us know what formations are working. Um, I've noticed, uh, as some other streamers have seen or uh, video makers have, have made, uh, an upturn in goalkeeper injuries. So I've had quite a number of occasions where the goalkeeper goes off injured. I don't know if that's something that everyone else has noticed. Well, anyway, stay tuned for the next episode. It'll hopefully be released in a few days. Um, I'm enjoying it, hopefully you're all enjoying it, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you.